uh, trust deficit among uh, the two countries. And uh, why recently there was a regime change in Pakistan? Yes. So what was it? How? So basically, the, uh, the, there was an ouster of Imran Khan's government mm -hmm. due to the no confidence vote in the Pakistan Assembly. Okay. So our Prime Minister, Honorable Prime Minister, is recently visiting European countries. Yes. So what are the main takeaways of this visit? So I think it's a very welcome step. We are uh, proactive in taking on with the Western and European countries. Uh, <coughs> earlier. Uh, we were having uh, non-aligned policy <coughs> where we were a step back, but now we are uh, proactively engaging with all the countries, uh, taking into this sphere of uh, the science and technology, then uh, the renewable energy sec uh, sector, uh, then uh, the Arctic routes we are discovering, fishing, such uh, global commons we are working, I think it is a welcome move by India. How India is maintaining a strategic balance between China and Western countries? Sir, India has always been uh, in a two-pronged way with China. For, uh, like on the one hand, we are having uh, confrontation and other side engagement that we call engagement in the political science. So we are trying to improve as we, as the, our former prime minister say, said that uh, we can't change our neighbors. Uh, we can't change our neighbors, so we are trying to have positive relations with China. However, the constant aggression at the border, we also need to keep check over that. Mm -hmm. So, in that manner, we are uh, having both the sides with China. However, due to these aggressions, we are coming closer to the Western parts uh, regarding the Indo Pacific and the concerns of India in uh, according to so, so, uh, related to sovereignty. Uh, in of the countries and on the border. So, can you briefly point out what is the difference between Quad and Ocas? Yes, sir. Uh, Quad is basically uh, an organization of uh, not a defense organization as that of Ocas, whereas Ocas is that of uh, the allyship of uh, Australia, UK, and uh, USA. Uh, whereas uh, Quad is not being referred to as a, a a defense organization against a certain power. It is, it, uh, as our finance minister also pointed out, that it has a multi spherical approach where it also uh, deals with the financial aspects of, uh, of the country, then development aspects, and uh, counter terrorism or, and other things. So that can be the basic difference between AUKUS and So India should be um, uh, a part of a cause, or India should stay away from a cause? Sir, as uh, uh, taking into consideration our policy from the past, uh, taking inspiration from non-alignment to now non-alignment uh, 2.0, where we are in actively engaging with all the partners uh, and staying away from uh, allyship, being a lie of someone, uh, we are having a strategic autonomy in this sphere. So I think uh, going uh, becoming someone's ally is not a stance for India and uh, we should work in uh, tandem with other countries uh, but maintaining our uh, strategic autonomy. So I think Quad is a better option than going for So, uh, What is MAD doctrine and uh, do you think that Ukraine uh, war has challenged the MAD doctrine? Sir, uh, MAD doctrine is mutually assured destruction doctrine where uh, both the uh, countries will equally be hurted by the impact of war and the weapon of mass destruction. Uh, however, uh, I don't see that uh, in Ukraine there is an uh, aspect of mad doctrine as uh, Russia isn't facing any attacks from Ukraine, but Ukraine is constantly getting hit and being uh, challenged by the army of uh, Russia. So it is a one-sided affair, I would say, in the destruction of uh, a country. And is the concept of deterrence is applicable in today's world? Yes, sir, definitely. Uh, I would say that there is definitely a concept of deterrence when there is a balance of power. Uh, if there is a uh, uh, there are allied countries, or if both the countries are having uh, the nuclear weapons with them, so deterrence is obviously there. However, in this case, we saw that <coughs> Ukraine is neither a part was neither a part of NATO and wasn't having uh, the nuclear weapons. So in that case, Russia could 
to uh, take a step in that direction to attacking Ukraine. Mm -hmm. So I think that wasn't applicable in the case of Russia and Ukraine crisis. And uh, recently, Sri Lanka is facing an economic crisis. Yes, sir. So what are the main reasons behind it? So there are variety of challenges which Sri Lanka faced. First of all, uh, their research and development uh, funding was around 9%, which was very low as compared to their capital investment. Uh, rather than the uh, popular opportunistic uh, measures and uh, the spending on the popular policies, welfare measures were excessively high. Secondly, the Rajapaksha government, uh, their decision like uh, taking a back from fertilizer subsidy and shifting to organic farming, which challenged their exports regarding teas, tea and uh, their plantation crops. That was a major challenge. Oh, then thirdly, the terrorist attacks, law and order situation that led to the fall of tourism in Sri Lanka. And then the exports uh, fell because of uh, the uh, COVID and supply constraints were there. So these all factors led to the high inflation and problems in Sri Lanka. And uh, which steps uh, Indian government is taking to promote their export or inter uh, uh, To Sri Lanka or? Yeah. Uh, general, in, general. in general. So in general, uh, we are providing export uh, subsidies. Uh, then we have priority, uh, priority sector uh, lending we are giving to certain industries. Uh, then in Atman Nirbhar package has been given where our own uh, industries are being promoted. Ma uh, Make in India campaign has been uh, promoted so that we manufacture things in India and then export it to the other foreign players. Is Make in India a success? So taking into consideration the recent uh, news of uh, cro crossing our exports uh, more than 400 billion dollars, I think it is a success. Uh, we are uh, now shifting uh, to the indigenous uh, indigen indigenization of products regarding in defense sector, we are uh, allowing FDIs and major players are coming in India and developing things in India. So I think we are shifting. However, on the other side, uh, we can see that there is import is also increasing from China and uh, uh, in APIs and electronics. I think the export has, import has been quite a lot from China. So we need to arrest that and we need to function upon that uh, so that we can do even better in the Make in India initiative. So Three reasons, uh, sir. I think that I'm quite hardworking and I have uh, perseverance to tackle this uh, situation and challenges which come in front of me. Uh, I think that I have the adequate uh, and requisite qualities of being a civil servant. I am passionate uh, regarding uh, the development of the people and uh, to promote social development. Uh, and uh, I think I can be a good player and a team player uh, in the legislation making and uh, the uh, policy making in the government of India. Uh, so I think taking these qualities into consideration, I would, uh, I think myself as a capable candidate to be in the civil service. Thank you. Sir. <coughs> Bishop, can you tell me what is the meaning of Bishop? Yes, sir. Uh, Your name. Yes, sir. Uh, it has, uh, I would say, I would uh, like to answer this question in three pronged ways. Uh, first of all, there is a, the meaning could be uh, morality and excellence. Second, Rishabh uh, is considered one of the first Jain Tirthankar, Rishabh Dev. And third, uh, it is also in Sanskrit it is, uh, and the Vedas, it is also considered as an incarnation of Lord Shiva. Squadron cadet captain and battalion cadet adjutant and armed force preparatory institution. Yes, House captain at Shamrock yes. School. Yes. It means you are having some leadership qualities. Yes. But I will not overlap that question, question again that you should have joined the defense services. Yes, sir, uh, there was a medical permanent rejection, so I couldn't get into that. So I reoriented myself toward the civil services. Okay. You have written that you are uh, having uh, reading about modern fighter planes. Yes, sir. Can you tell me in detail? Uh, sir, modern fighter aircraft, actually, when I was in uh, my 8th or 9th standard, I had this fascination to become a fighter pilot. 
So from that I used started playing games. Then I got inclined into this hobby uh, about reading about various modern fighter aircrafts. Then to know about their capabilities. Uh, so from that onwards I continued this hobby. So presently I like to read about the aircrafts like modern day Rafale is coming or Sukhoi India. The aircrafts which are prominent in India, fifth generation fighters which are there. So all the modern aircrafts I like to study about them. Recently, in India is operating with new generation aircrafts. So the latest which India no, currently yes, sir. currently they are operating uh, uh, the uh, aircrafts from third generation to four point fifth generation. Uh, being considered third generation would be MiG twenty one Bison, and uh, the four point five generation would be the recent port Rafale. So these are the generations which. Why India is not self-reliant in the defense sector still, even after independence of 75 years? Sir, uh, starting after the independence, we were mostly having a policy of import substitution where our imports were quite high as our manufacturing, as compared to our manufacturing. Slowly and slowly, with the, the oncoming of uh, the increase in the FDI uh, and the autonomy being given, given in the defense sector, the automatic automatic route uh, being open in the FDIs. So uh, investments are coming, we are now allowing private players. So earlier because of these challenges, because uh, we were not having that much of technology or infrastructure uh, uh, regarding the development of the defense capabilities, uh, we weren't able to do, do that. However, presently we can see that uh, the negative import list we have uh, made in the defense sector. So I think that now our capability is growing at quite a higher pace <coughs> compared to here. I think you are in your father is dealing with the pharmaceutical. Yes, sir. One thing you tell me, an issue that MRP written on medical strips. Yes, sir. Is big, you buy there is a huge difference yes, between sir. charging and written on MRP on the strips. Sir, uh, especially cancer medicines, cancer injections, life-saving drugs. Sir, uh, I am not completely sure about that. However, I would uh, like to uh, make a guess upon it if you would allow me. To. No, okay. I will ask you why there is so much brain drain from Punjab, especially young people like you there going out abroad. Yes. And why more, only more in Punjab is trending there? Sir, I think there can be a variety of factors behind this. Uh, firstly, I would say that uh, the uh, agricultural land in Punjab is decreasing every day due to disintegration of our lands. So the, uh, the money with the people is reducing and uh, they are being less inclined to other activities like earlier in sports sector people used to go and other occupations. Secondly, I think that uh, the uh, employment, unemployment in Punjab is quite uh, uh, high and uh, more than unemployment, low skill uh, jobs we are having rather than high skill jobs and people in Punjab uh, uh, are more inclined towards the white collar job uh, rather than going into uh, the other jobs. Uh, so, uh, for the uh, proper and adequate uh, sustenance of their life uh, and the comfort of life, they try to go to other countries and strive for that. Uh, so, taking into consideration the unemployment and these challenges, uh, the drug problem and law and order situation in Punjab, uh, the youth in Punjab is likely to go to other countries for their own better and comfort of life. Can you tell me something regarding stubborn burning and agriculture prices, especially in Punjab? Yes, sir. <coughs> so basically, uh, uh, the rice is being harvested uh, in September. In the, uh, I'm not sure about the month. Is it, it is either September or October, and they have only 15 days to uh, harvest and then grow the other crop uh, wheat for the next season. So due to the lack of this time, uh, the farmer tend, tend to buy the, uh, burn the crops, uh, uh, burn the stubble, uh, which creates a huge amount of pollution in the air. So this is the major cause of concern. 
uh, if we take into consideration the other uh, innovative methods like SRS, uh, uh, stubble, uh, happy cedar and other aspects, they tend to be expensive like 6 to 8 thousand per acre the cost of that and normally they can save that money if they burn the stubble. Uh, so in, this is the major cause of concern why the stubble burning issue is a challenge in Punjab. And because of the questions? Sir, agriculture crisis I would uh, uh, attribute it to the uh, lower water levels in Punjab. Uh, because of that our fertility is being reduced and we are excessively using the fertilizers. Uh, that is why due to that our yield is uh, also decreasing with coming time. Uh, so this is one of the major factors that is Punjab is suffering. Right. Okay. We should you have given an option for IAS and other life services. Yes. The recent Patiala violence. Yes. So you would have been on a responsible post yes. being as a civil servant. Yes. What would have been your best reaction? Or how you see this problem? So I think these, uh, this problem in uh, Patiala which happened uh, was due to the uh, miscreants from both the communities and usually if we see Patiala is a peaceful city and there is a harmonious uh, integration of both the communities. However, certain miscreants are always there and radicalization uh, can lead to such uh, steps. However, if I was in this responsible position then uh, naturally uh, it, uh, it was pointed out that there, were, uh, there was already an intel regarding uh, such kind of violence or such kind of mar march being taken place. So the, naturally the uh, first course of action would have been to uh, make house arrest of the leaders which are prompting this action. Then section 144 could have been imposed to uh, stop the, uh, you, uh, the communities from congregation then uh, on uh, the third step I would say that peace community could uh, the peace uh, uh, meeting which was set up and the peace uh, committee which was made could have been made a bit earlier so that uh, acrimonious and uh, uh, harmony could have been uh, uh, made inside the both the communities uh, to allay the fears of both the communities and it could have been resolved amicably. Now do you think the state DGP was aware of this thing three days ago in advance? Such and such things. Sir, I'm uh, not sure about DGV, but yes, there was an intel to the yeah. SSP level and higher officials. Okay. Sir, uh, as you are a computer engineer, I will ask you last word one question. Yes, sir. Can you tell me what is the difference between artificial intelligence and robotics? Sir, I think uh, they, they work in tandem. Robotics is something. Uh, where a machine is having the capabilities to do certain uh, steps uh, which we are programmed it to be. However, artificial intelligence is where that robot could detect uh, that could have uh, that works upon the aspect of our neural networks uh, uh, on the uh, on the capacity on the lines of human brain where it can detect the things and can take its own decisions. Uh, uh, so I think that would be a major difference between both of them. Okay. This is my last question. Okay. So you are not selected. Yes. What will be your reaction? Sir, I wasn't uh, able to get uh, uh, in through prelims three times. I have uh, worked quite a, a lot for this. I think I would be able to get through this uh, civil services this time. Uh, but. Uh, there is always a next time. I would like to be able to try it the next time. Okay. <coughs> I just to ask you. First of all, be easy. Yes. We shall talk in a very proper way. Okay. Yes. So, first of all, I would like to ask you. Yes. How would you deal with a crowd? A crowd. crowd. Suppose you are an officer. Yes. There's a big crowd yes. in the street or without anywhere. Yes. So then a whole would be it. Sir, uh, depends if it is peaceful congregation or it's a peaceful it's congregation. It's a crowd. They are demanding something about their right. Okay, sir. 
if it is peaceful, then the main role would be to establish law in order to check uh, that miscreants do not uh, cause problem. If it is going peacefully, then I would, uh, it is their uh, right, constitutional right to demand uh, their, about their needs. So I think taking crowd ma uh, management and taking in consideration about the traffic management uh, that could have been hampered due to the crowd activities. So I would like to take that those things into consideration and work on that. The next case, uh, you are talking about political science and all that. Yes. So I ask you one thing. Yes. Ki, who has written uh, this what is the grammar of politics? Sir, I'm not sure. Okay. Next is what about Dr. Ambedkar's contribution in the constitution. Sir, the, in the drafting committee of our constitution, he was the head of our drafting committee. Uh, he was uh, he gave the idea of constitutionalism uh, in our constitution uh, and uh, given various rights to the minority sections in our uh, in our society, uh, gave them empowerment. Uh, so he. He analyzed various constitutions from different parts of the world and took on the uh, uh, the best features which we could have incorporated into our community uh, in our country, taking into consideration our history with the uh, the British uh, uh, parliamentary form of government. So I think his contribution was quite immense in the constitution making of India. Very. Now there is one thing more. Yes, you are talking about research also. Yes. What is a research methodology? When we deal with yes. a particular research, we have a particular objective of the research. Yes. And after that, we prepare a methodology. Yes. And, and because you have done that scientific code. Yes. Uh, so, how can you define a research methodology? Sir, I wouldn't be sure about the research methodology, but I can tell about mine. Uh, we were given an object. I just want to clarify, we use certain, you see, tools yes. for the research. Now yes. I think it will be more clearly yes. to you. Yes, sir. When you do some research, it may be very simple also. Yes, sir. So we certain use uh, tools, uh, search tools. Yes. For example, we can survey, yes. interview, questionnaire, and all yes. that. So what is the main? Sir, uh, my research which I did in my uh, pattern, uh, my focus was uh, regarding uh, uh, the uh, the from the mostly from the internet uh, uh, from the articles which were there and from the books I could uh, uh, get from the libraries. Uh, so uh, also we were given the uh, the tool of uh, IndiaStats.com. We were given a, given a subscription of that, so we could get all the stats from there. So these tools were something which I implied. Uh, and other tools like uh, simple where we used to write latex on uh, mm -hmm. Windows and Microsoft Word. Mm -hmm. yes, now, because you, when you will be an officer, yes. one has to prepare prime. Suppose you are uh, appointed at the block level just at the time of training. Yes, sir. So one has to prepare a uh, prime. Huh? Prime. Economic planning. Economic plan. Okay. So, how would you Sir, uh, whole district, can you. No, I'm talking about in particular. Uh, about. Uh, block. Suppose you are appointed in district, but yeah. Yes. That will be very sure. Yes, sir. So, there is one block. There are about six to seven, uh, 10 to 12 blocks. Yes. So, you can select any one block. Yes. Suppose there is a block salon. Yes. Yes. Okay. yes, sir. So, how would you? Right. Sir, because you deal with the applications and implementation, yes. how would you implement it? Sir, mm, uh, my initial focus would surely be upon the basic amenities, that is health and education in my block. Uh, first of all, I would take into uh, the ground level reports from what all problems uh, they are facing in the level of health, education and skill development in my block. My main focus towards to, uh, would be towards that uh, because I may not be knowing certain challenges they are facing uh, just after campaigns regarding the empowerment of teachers. We could 
provide dignity of teachers so that uh, they are more involved in uh, the aspect of education development. So I can uh, work upon that. Uh, then third, uh, second point would be I would look at the infra infrastructure bottlenecks in uh, the block which are facing, uh, what the problems people are facing on ground, if water and sanitation issues are there or uh, road issues or the street light issues, such issues I can take uh, up second uh, into consideration. So I think I will be asking for reports and will be constantly in touch with the officials uh, who are working on the ground and could give in my input to them and directions at, or adequately according to the situation. Good. Yes. So, uh, you see, we talk about street welfare. Yes. Or we can call it welfare state also. Yes. So what is that? Sir, it is a uh, positive uh, concept of uh, liberty where the state orient itself for the welfare of people and various welfare measures are taken by the state so as to uplift the weaker sections of the society and work for the betterment of the uh, society as a whole. So this I would like to say as is called the welfare state. Now our last question. Yes sir. Uh, you see, uh, there are certain problems, problems, the economic problems, political issues. Yes sir. Uh, uh, there is one section in the society which is ignored and that is based on what? That is what uh, we call it, that is all in India. We say there is a one Vavastha. Yes. Because you know Sanskrit also, you know, as we use yes. Hindi also. What is that? Sir, uh, the major challenge, uh, a unique problem which India faces as compared to the rest of the world would be the caste problem which we are facing, which uh, nowhere in the world we are having. The one Vavastha that has been divided into caste and sub caste, and division based upon that is something which our country is facing in the social aspect. So I think that is the problem which we are facing. In the future, have you ever tried yes. to know what will be the total number of these such uh, cast, that means SCs or maybe BCs. I'm just talking about what may be the number of such cast. It's a social problem. Can statistical data or as per census books of the data? A simple uh, judgment here, judgment. It may not be correct. So uh, there could be even more than thousands of them because... Uh, yeah, I have an idea. There's a, okay, it may be thousand. Thousand, I mean, two to thousand I think. Yes. Okay, it's six thousand, six point five thousand. Okay, sir. That's all, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.